is LA Cartier and I'm back at it again with another video. So this time, as you may see, it's not a fashion haul. I don't have no PLT bags, no misguided bags or loads of clothes around me. It's literally just me. Uh, I am here to talk to you about how I became a Jamaican citizen and how I got my Jamaican passport. So before I get into it, I'll kind of just give you a little bit of a background uh, story as to who I am. So my name is LA, LA Cartier. I'm a singer songwriter and I'm from London, UK, England. Hey, stand up. <laughs> uh, basically, I was born here, was born in London. My parents were also born in London. So I'm like second generation born in London on both sides, my mom's side and my dad's side. Uh, when people ask me where I'm from, I usually just say Caribbean because I can't be bothered to go into it. Uh, my parents are from two... I mean, my parents' parents are all from different countries. So basically, my mum's mum is Trinidadian and my mum's dad is Guyanese or was Guyanese. On my dad's side, my dad's mixed race, so he's half white and half Jamaican. All my family in Jamaica are Indian, so like Indian Jamaicans. So my dad's mixed race and that just leaves me being kind of like a whole melting pot <laughs> of all these different places so when people ask me i just say i'm caribbean because i can't be bothered to go into it do you know what i mean i can't be bothered to really break down all the different parts because it's just long so i just say i'm caribbean uh the reason as to why i got a jamaican passport was actually because i feel more connected to jamaica and i guess that's just because i've been there more times out of all of my countries like, I've been to Trinidad and Tobago quite a few times, but if I left the family house, I wouldn't know what to do. I wouldn't know where to turn, left, right. I wouldn't know what to do. Jim, um, Guyana, I've never been. I would love to go just to see where my granddad came from, but I've never actually been to Guyana. And obviously England, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> and Jamaica is somewhere that I've always been going to. Since I was younger, my nan on my dad's side, actually my white nan, used to take me to Jamaica every year. Like, every year we'd go to Jamaica. I think I actually started walking in Jamaica. My mum said I came through departures one time walking and she was screaming and shouting. My mum's very over the top. So, yeah, I can believe that. <laughs> um, and I literally used to go every year. Like, for six weeks holidays, half terms. Whenever I could, really, my nan would take us. So, I've always had that connection. And since I've been older, as an adult, I still go to Jamaica I go with my friends. I still go and check for my family. My family are from a place called Spanish Town. I, you know, I drive in Jamaica. I can find my way around. I'll be in Ochi one day. I'll be in Mobe the next day. I'll be in Kingston the next day. So I like to get around in Jamaica and I'm comfortable with Jamaica. So it's always been the place that I've kind of had like more of a connection with. Uh, so that's probably the reason as to why I chose that country to get a citizenship for. If I go back to like the reasons as to why I got a citizenship, it kind of boils down to lockdown. During lockdown, I literally felt like I was a prisoner. Like I was in my yard and I felt like I was in the jailhouse. I literally felt like me and the prisoners were going through the same thing. We were locked up in the house, can't go nowhere, can't even walk outside. I was trying to think of reasons as to why I was on the street. Like, if I got stopped, what would I say? I'd have to say there's an emergency somewhere. I was literally trying to think of ways to navigate around the streets because we weren't allowed out. We were only allowed out for one hour of exercise a day. I, I was ready to just star jump uh, 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 along the streets of London for the whole day. And any police officer that saw me just say I was doing the exercise because I really felt like I was locked up. And it was the worst time ever. I just felt like, how can I be in this country and I own a British passport that everybody values so much and my passport is useless? Like, useless right now. There's no way I can use it, no matter how much money I have. There's no way I can walk to the airport or go to the travel agents and book a flight. They're not going to let me get on plane. Like, I literally felt like I was a prisoner. I was in the jailhouse. I was literally in the jailhouse. Like, I was calling my friends, like, can you not just come and stand outside with some post saying free LA? Because that's how I felt. I felt like I was locked up. They won't let me out. Locked up. I was even here sitting on the same sofa doing videos, calling out to Boris, like, Boris, this is not fair. What are we doing? What are we doing? Make it make sense. What are we doing here? I was literally calling out to Boris because I couldn't take it. So, I decided 
to go and look at how I could leave the country. And literally the only options were like if it was a mad emergency or you were leaving the, the, the country for work purposes. So I was trying to find a way for somebody to write me some type of letter. I'm not going to lie. I was literally thinking, who's going to write me a letter and tell them that I need to come to Jamaica to help, do you get it, in the market and them things there or something? I don't know. Like, help in the... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the reason was going to be, but I needed to find a reason, yeah? And I didn't want to call down no crosses on myself either, but I was even thinking, like, what emergency can I say that I need to leave the country for? Because seriously, I was here thinking, how am I going to get out of the country? And there was literally no way. I was stuck. There was no way. And everywhere that I looked basically said, you're unable to leave the country unless you're a citizen of another country and you're only allowed to go to the country that you are a citizen, uh, a citizen of. So that's when I actually realised that I was doomed. <laughs> I realised I was doomed and I realised there was no way of me getting out of, the, out of London, basically out of England. Um, I ended up going online and I was like, I'm going to become a citizen of another country because this can't catch me again. I literally sat here and I was like, this cannot catch me again. There's no way that me and my kids are going to be locked up like this in this country again. It's not going to happen. So I decided that I was going to get my citizenship for Jamaica and that if I ever went into lockdown again, that's where me and my kids would be. So that my kids can run on the beach and be free and have fun and still experience life and not literally be stuck in the four walls of this house in London. So I went online and I basically went onto the website of the Jamaican embassy, which I believe um, is like in Kensington or something in London. I'm not too sure of the address, but I will put the link for the website at the bottom of the screen so that you guys can see the website that I went on. Um, all of the information was on there and there were certain requirements that you had to kind of meet in order for you to be able to apply for the Jamaican passport. Now, the grounds that I applied on um, was basically the fact that one of my grandparents were uh, born in Jamaica so therefore were Jamaican citizens yeah or are Jamaican citizens so clearly like I said my dad's dad is Jamaican he was born there so I was like okay I fit into the category like I can do this <laughs> do you know what I mean like I can actually do this so I went on there and tried to find out what it is that I needed and it seemed quite simple so I'll kind of give you a rundown of what it is that I needed to do and how the process was. And I'm really hoping that it can help somebody who wants to do this for whatever reason you're doing it for. Um, yeah, I'll just try and give you as much information as I can, basically. So first of all, on the website, I gathered that I had to fill out a form. Now, the form was quite simple. It literally was my details, the details of my parent that links to the grandparent that I'm applying through. So in this case, in my case, it was my dad because my dad is the link to my jamaican grandparent so i needed to put my details on the form my dad's details on the form and my granddad's details on the form now i also had to get four pictures taken the four pictures was because i wasn't just applying applying for citizenship i was also applying for a passport so they said they needed four pictures now the pictures have certain requirements and it's so important that you actually get these um, correct because I was told that a lot of people have been turned away and they haven't been able to successfully put through an application because their pictures have failed um, if you go to somewhere like snappy snaps one of these shops that have the official you know they do official passport pictures they actually have a setting on their printer for Jamaican pictures now I believe it has to have like a white or a cream background and it has to be matte something along those lines they're quite strict so i know that the requirements are on the website that i would have already put down at the bottom of the screen so if you are going to do this i do really really recommend that you go and find the exact requirements of the picture if you can't be bothered to read all of that just make sure you go to one of them shops and say it's for a jamaican passport they will select it on the machine and you pay about 12 pound i think for four pictures or something and you'll get your pictures done how they need to be done so I then found out that I needed, an, um, I needed an appointment, but I knew that the appointments were going to be like ages away. So I had to get an, appoint an appointment as soon as possible. 
so I just basically booked the first one that I saw. Now that was about two months away. So I literally had to wait two months until I got to get to the date of my appointment. That was just giving me time to get everything together, I guess. So the documents that I needed were my passport and birth certificate and then the passport and certificate and birth certificate of my dad and then my granddad's passport and birth certificate now bearing in mind my granddad although he was born in jamaica and he's a jamaican citizen he did not have a jamaican passport he only has an english passport luckily he had just applied for his new birth certificate a reprint of it so it had just come from jamaica it was fresh and obviously that shows that he was born in jamaica my dad he's english he's british he was born here and has a British passport. So no passports that I had to have were Jamaican. I didn't have to have anybody's passport being Jamaican for me to do this application. It was all done using English passports. Um, the only thing literally that linked me to Jamaica was the fact that my granddad was born there and it would have stated that on his birth certificate. So that was it. One of the main things that I cannot stress enough is that the names have to be exactly the same and have to match across the board. So when I say that, I mean my name on my passport has to be the same as my birth certificate, right? Then on my birth certificate, where it says dad, the name that is written there has to be identical to the name that is written on my dad's passport and my dad's birth certificate. On my dad's birth certificate, where it says his dad, which is my granddad, my granddad's name had to be written exactly the same on my dad's birth certificate as it is on my granddad's own birth certificate and his passport. They are very, very, very strict on the names being exactly the same. Now, I had a problem, but I kind of anticipated that I would have a problem because my name is actually LA. For those that don't know, on my birth certificate is capital L dot capital A dot. LA is actually my name. So when you put your name into certain systems, it does some of them don't accept dots some of them do accept dots so it's very strange some don't accept more than i mean less than three characters and then i have to add another character so sometimes i have to put laa just for it to go through or if it doesn't accept the dots i might have to put l space a if it doesn't accept the space sometimes i just have to put la or whoever's putting my name into a system this is what has to happen so i kind of anticipated that i would have a problem anyway um and there are like differences in the way that my name is written, but because of my name being LA, they let it go. Whereas if my name was a regular name that was just misspelt on, an, on the other document, then they wouldn't have accepted it. So you literally have to make sure that everything is exactly the same, no spelling mistakes, nothing, because they will not accept it. So I made sure that I had all of my documents to hand and ready. And the day of the actual, uh, like, applic like the, the day of the meeting came when I had to go and do the application. So I drove down to wherever it was. I did have some footage because I was actually planning on vlogging it, but I didn't end up doing that. So I do have some footage somewhere. If I can find it, I will put it in. I literally drove down there and I parked right outside. There was a parking space right outside opposite the embassy. I paid like a couple pound or whatever for a few hours i literally paid for about two hours because i was scared i didn't know how long they were going to have me in there for and how long i was going to be waiting for so i just put two hours on the car to be safe um i don't like to do public transport so i drove it was a risk because i didn't know about the parking but it was cool it was fine there is bay parking uh i went in there and i was just told to sit down so i just sat down in a little waiting room and i just had to wait and I was just waiting for time. I was thinking, are these people actually going to see me? Because nobody told me nothing. I had to go up to the desk and I was like, hi, excuse me. I was told to wait. They were like, just like, yeah, wait. Like there was no, oh, just wait until this or until that. No, I was just sitting there working on vibes. Do you know what I mean? Um, the guy eventually called me and I went up to like a little window. It wasn't like you go into a room and sit down and have an interview, nothing like that. I literally walked up to the window. The man said, can I have your documents? I handed him my documents. I had them all in like a little uh, sleeve thing. And I had my documents, my dad's documents, my granddad's documents, all separate but together. Everything was ready, my four pictures, and also the form, yeah, that I had printed out and that I had filled out. So I had the form there as well. Um, he checked everything, made sure that everything was, like I said, all the names were the same, date of birth, everything matched, etc., And everything was the same as what I had put on the form. 
he did some stamping. Do, do, do. I think I got some videos of him stamping away. And then he literally was like, okay, you, you have to make the payment. He gave me a slip of paper and I had to go away and phone this number and make a payment. Now, I believe that the passport, the citizenship was about £80. And I think the passport was about £70, £60, something like that on top. So altogether, it worked out 100 and something pounds. It really wasn't that expensive considering the fact that I just I went into it blindly. I didn't even know how much it was going to cost me. I'm not going to lie. I just knew what I needed to do. And I even got it confused because in the beginning, I thought it was one fee. But then I realised that obviously I was paying for the citizenship and the passport. But yeah, whatever. It wasn't that bad. It was less than £150, put it that way, to do everything. Um, so I went away. I paid for it. And I just waited, like I waited for about two months, maybe they said it could take up to like three months for me to actually receive it. I waited for about two months and then my passport literally came through the door one day. Like I was so excited. I don't think you understand how excited I was. I was so excited because I was like, oh my God, I'm actually like a citizen of somewhere else. And like I said, I'm English. My parents are English. It's not as if to say I had like a parent who was like fresh from Jamaica where I've got that connection I didn't even have a connection of J to Jamaica through my dad it was through my grandparents and not even to be honest my granddad it was my nan who was actually English who used to take me there and kind of built that connection with Jamaica anyway so I was never a child that thought that I would ever have a passport from anywhere else it was never even something that that crossed my mind so to for me now to be a dual citizen it's very strange. <laughs> I haven't actually flown on my Jamaican passport before, but I will do. And also, one of the benefits um, that I must say is I was told by the woman at the embassy that there's, I think, a hundred and something countries that do not require a visa if you travel on your Jamaican passport. So that there alone, that saves you a lot of money. Because especially now that we're not in the EU, there's places that... Um, like t travel has changed just as a whole so there's different requirements now to enter different countries some places may require a visa uh, ghana for example i heard that they've opened up their barriers or their borders should i say to jamaicans so you can literally just travel there on the passport you don't have to do no forms no nothing it's just like crossing the, the road and just showing your id kind of thing so with me i always had in mind that in the future i'd like to do business in jamaica in ghana in different places have land have houses whatever it is so for me to be able to have a passport whereby i can have a bank account in jamaica i can kind of maneuver around there and do business stuff over there i can have free travel to certain african countries and stuff it could just help and make things a lot easier so i would definitely say that it's a great thing to have it depends on what your reasoning is why you you know you feel like you might want one but if you want to have one just go for it and get one why not i just don't see the reason as to why not it doesn't revoke your british citizenship it doesn't have any effect on your british citizenship if anything it just kind of gives you a way out if you ever need to go anywhere else but one thing i did actually read today was that if you are in the country that you hold that you also hold citizenship in. if anything happened and you needed like help from the uk government you wouldn't be covered by the uk you would have to go to the the government of the country that you're in and they would deal with you as a citizen so that's the only issue um you know but god forbid we don't want to get into no problems abroad uh we're not doing banged up abroad <laughs> i did mention that in my last fashion haul we're not doing banged up abroad so yeah i don't uh, ever want to be in any positions where that's my my, my problem but yeah just something to keep in mind i don't think there are any other negative like things about having dual citizenship if there is i'm open to to hearing what they are so please let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed the video if it's been helpful um and yeah like stay tuned like comment and subscribe please share it if you think it will be helpful to anybody else and make sure that you guys uh, click the bell so that you're notified when I upload other videos. I'll be back again with something else. I don't know what it is. You know, I just move with how I feel like moving. You know that, right? <laughs> I just do what I feel like doing, guys, on this channel. It's my channel. Like, I'm sure that you guys enjoy it. That's why you come back. I hope you enjoyed this. If this is your first time on my channel, and hopefully you will come back and you'll check out my other videos. But I kind of just go with how I feel, guys. I don't really have a structure and yeah i just hope you enjoy my content if there's anything that you would like me to do a video on if there's anything else that you'd like to know any questions you have for me then i will 
uh, answer if you comment down below. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hypnotize, love